Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to take you along with me as I transform this solid pine dresser. Furniture pieces like this are fairly common where I live. One thing I really like about them is that they are solid wood. There's absolutely no veneer on this piece of furniture and they have a lot of handmade qualities to them. A downside to this type of furniture is that because it's made out of such a soft wood and I live in a very dry climate, you often find them with large cracks. These large cracks don't often interfere with the structural integrity of the piece. In fact, they add a certain aesthetic, especially for people who live in the older style adobe homes and want to create that old world look. This would have been a really easy route for me to go with. But when I first saw this piece and all those little windows, I immediately had other plans in mind. The absolute first thing that needed to get addressed on this piece was giving it a very good cleaning. This piece was filthy. I used a couple different sizes of scrub brushes, a sponge, and a lot of elbow grease to really get into all those little grooves. The entire time I was cleaning this piece and scrubbing all these little <laughs> shapes, I was thinking to myself, oh my gosh, imagine trying to sand this down and leave it a wood finish. No way. To all of you furniture purists out there, viewer discretion is advised. The following footage contains a graphic video of solid wood furniture being covered by many, many, many obnoxious colors of paint. You have been warned. In all seriousness, guys, this piece was found on the side of the road and it most likely would have ended up in the landfill had I not intervened. What caught my eye immediately, though, was all these different shapes. It reminded me of a beautiful gallery wall full of different colors and shapes of artwork. I thought, how fun would it be to try and recreate this look on a piece of furniture? My inspiration for this piece was none other than one of my favorite artists, Hans Slonum. He is a modern day painter known for his use of bright vivid colors and repetitive patterns. He has found a way to mesh his two loves of painting and collecting antique and vintage items. He uses all these secondhand frames and puts his own unique artworks in them to create these elaborate bunny walls, which I absolutely adore. Before any of that fun stuff could start happening, I had to address the repair work. Starting off with the four missing panels on the fronts of these drawers that needed to be replaced. I didn't have clamps that were long enough, so I opted to use what was available. This is how I found this dresser. Somebody obviously already went through the trouble of stripping the entire top. And now we have these dings in the wood along with these very large cracks exposed. There's no telling if these damaged areas were even worse before the person started stripping it. 
but I have a feeling that this might have been the reason they gave up on this piece. I would have preferred removing this top, inserting a little bit of wood glue and clamping it back together. But the way this top is built is with large dowel pins instead of screws, so that really wasn't an option here. I had to fill it with something. I went with using DAP plastic wood because this particular filler dries a pretty close color to natural pine. So before I sand down the front of the drawers, um, I have an idea for painting inside of these, but these are really narrow. You can see how, how narrow they are. So it's going to be a little hard to paint anything on that. So what I did is I took uh, the router bit that was inside of my Dremel, I took it out and I use this one. It's a dado bit and I stuck it in here, kind of like a router sled and just trim off these little tops here. I like it so much more surface to work with. Also, when I can remember, I like to drill in my hardware holes before I start painting. I chose the brightest color I had in my personal inventory for the frame, which is going to represent the wall for the picture frames in this piece. So I only put one coat of paint on this dresser last night and I stopped because the thing just wasn't looking right. I couldn't put my finger on it, so I said, you know, I'm just gonna go to bed and I'll revisit in the morning. And what I think it is, is all these little sections here that I routed to kind of give me more space to paint on. It's still not that much space and it looks a little distracting. That's what I'm not liking. If you look at the side, I like the way the side looks with these bigger panels. To me, it looks like a gallery wall, which is exactly the look I'm going for. Those are perfect sizes. They look like little frames, little pictures. But those little ones there, those tiny little ones, it's kind of pointless. So my thought is this morning, I'm gonna see if I can remove this frame, take all those little five pieces of wood out and then put one plaque right here in the middle. And I think that will give me the look that I'm going for. So let's get to it and see if we can make it work. Wow, I was so much happier with that one large panel in the middle. It just looks so much better. This just kind of goes to show you if something doesn't feel right, you're not crazy. Keep working at it. You'll get it eventually. I also decided to go ahead and prime the panels before I started painting them because with those drawer fronts off, it made it so much easier. Okay, so before we go on painting all the little windows on this piece, you can see I'm in a different location. I'm out in my little shed shop because I decided to go ahead and address what I want to do to the top and also the inside of the drawers. 
This piece was meant to be a rustic piece of furniture, which is not the finish that I'm going for. So I'm kind of forcing my own finish on it instead of just working with the way it's built. It's solid pine. Um, it's not the greatest wood. It has character in it. It dings divots. They use a lot of um, pieces that had sap markings like right here and a lot of knots and stuff. So it's meant to be rustic, but <laughs> I'm not doing a rustic finish. So I'm going to use this um, Rust-Oleum protective enamel. This paint is really heavy duty. It's great for like metal. I've used it to coat on um, bases of treadle sewing machines. It works really good. And I've done it once on a dresser. It gave me a really nice lacquered, black lacquered kind of finish. And that's what I'm going for here. And it is strong, so I'm not worried about it, you know, breaking through. I didn't do this repair, but it's pretty good. It's ugly though. <laughs> so if I tried staining that, it's not gonna cover it. And also on the sides where I filled in a lot of those imperfections in the wood, which it was built with, you know, staining this is not gonna do much. So I'm gonna paint the sides, paint the inside, and paint the top with this Rust-Oleum. This is an oil-based enamel paint, so you absolutely must mix it properly. If you plan on using it right away, I would have your hardware store shake it up for you before you bring it home. I also like to dilute this paint with about 30 to 40% acetone because it's just such a thick consistency and it helps with the drying time as well. Because it's not a low VOC paint, you want to make sure and protect yourself properly. I wore a respirator, gloves, and I was outside in my shed with the doors wide open for proper ventilation. You can use a roller with this paint. And this application, I used a couple old brushes I had that I wouldn't mind sacrificing because I knew once I was done with this paint, there would be no washing them. So just keep that in mind. Don't use your good paint brushes. Use a chip brush or like a foam roller or something you don't mind tossing when you're done. Now, I do realize that this paint is not intended specifically for furniture. So please take this with a grain of salt. The only reason I'm showing you this and I'm doing it for this application is because I have had good results with it in the past. So just keep that in mind. I'm not telling you to go out and do this. I'm only showing you my process. Okay, so that first layer has dried. You can see the pine is very, very porous. It just kind of drank up this paint. I put it on pretty thick, but once it completely soaks up as much as it will soak up over here in these areas where it's shiny, where it's fully saturated, that's what it's gonna look like on the whole piece. Almost like a lacquered finish. I sanded in between my layers of paint with a fine grit sandpaper just to make sure I knocked out any sort of dust nibs and just to give that previous layer a nice bit of tooth to accept the next layer. Here's what the surface looked like after three coats of paint and a light scuff sanding. You can see I still had a lot of dings that weren't completely filled within the wood. In hindsight, I probably would have done a little bit better by going over the entire piece with a grain filler but you live and learn i didn't have that problem with the other project i did but i will keep that in mind if i ever do this route again at this point with three coats it still wasn't looking good enough so i decided to go with just one more coat of paint i applied the fourth coat like the previous ones diluted with a little bit of acetone and applied a thick layer onto the surface letting it dry completely overnight here's what it looked like the very next day as you can tell, not all of those little dings were completely filled in, but they did look a lot better. And although I did not have the glass-like lacquered finish like I did on my previous project, I really wasn't angry at this finish. I had at this point already spent about seven days worth of work just letting this thing dry in between coats and getting called to my regular day job that I was okay with it at this point. I had already spent enough time and I was ready to move on to the rest of the dresser. So this was my stopping point.
To make this look like a true gallery wall full of different types of frames, I gathered up all the metallic paints I had. I even gathered up gilding waxes and black paint. I used a small artist brush to paint the inserts of the frames with the brightest colors of paint that I had. Painting each individual square its own bright color took several layers of paint to achieve the full opacity and many hours of work. But this is something that I really enjoy. It's relaxing to me and I just sat there with the music on and painted away. Something that I thought was really interesting about Hans Slonum is that he likes to start off every morning by painting bunnies on canvas. And since I've never painted bunnies before, I thought this would be a good exercise to try out before I started it on the dresser. I pulled out a couple of colors of paint and went at it. I also thought it was really neat that he sometimes turns his paintbrush around and uses the back end to scratch in texture within the paint while it's still wet. As I kept painting these bunnies, I got a little more comfortable with the movement of my paintbrush and although they don't look like hunts, you can tell that they are bunnies. Once I got started painting these bunnies, I started to build a lot of momentum because it was a really fun process. I started thinking, what kind of expressions could I paint on these bunnies' faces? You know, what would they be thinking? And what kind of personalities lied behind these images? They were just a lot of fun to create. When the paint was completely dry, I sealed up everything with Minwax Polyacrylic in a satin formula. Added on the drawer faces to the drawers. And then attached this cute little bunny hardware that I found off of Amazon. And this project was finished. Here's a quick reminder of what it looked like before we started. Show 